हेलो स्टूडेंट्स अस्सलाम वालेकुम आई एम गुलाम कुब्रिया ओ लेवल एंड ए लेवल फिजिक्स एंड केमिस्ट्री टीचर अल्फ्रेड इंटरनेशनल स्कूल एंड कॉलेज टुडे वी विल लर्न अबाउट द टॉपिक दिस इज ऑफ वेव्स दिस टॉपिक इज फ्रॉम फिजिक्स the basic things of wave is transverse wave longitudinal wave frequency wave length time period reflection refraction क्रिटिकल एंगल एंड टोटल इंटरनल रिफ्लेक्शन दीज आर द बेसिक टॉपिक्स बेसिक थिंग्स ऑफ वेब्स टूडे आई डिस्कस ऑन दीज टॉपिक्स ओके at first i am telling you about transverse wave before making you understand transverse wave i want to tell you that mechanical wave and electromagnetic magnetic wave mechanical wave has two types of that is transverse wave and longitudinal wave mechanical waves have this two type one is transverse wave and another is longitudinal wave now about transverse wave if if we think about this wave that the wave is propagating forward and the particles are vibrating upward and downward this is the direction of wave propagation and this is the direction of particle vibration from this figure we can say that the wave which has the angle of 90 degree the wave direction if the wave direction is at 90 degree with the vibration of the particle then the wave is called transverse wave if the wave sorry if the direction 
of the wave propagation is at 90 degree with the vibration of particles then that wave is called transverse wave so here we can say this is the wave propagation and this is the direction of the particle vibration and the angle between the these two direction this two direction is 90 degree and this wave is called transverse wave okay now students we will learn about longitudinal wave now Here this is called compression. And this is called rarefaction. This is another type of wave that is longitudinal wave. And here this wave propagates through compression and rarefaction. Now and the particles vibrate in this way one direction another direction they vibrate in this way and wave propagates forward so here we can say the direction of wave propagation and the direction of particle vibration is parallel to one another and the angle between them is zero degree suppose here I am drawing the figure here this is the direction of wave propagation and this is the direction of particle vibration and the angle between them is zero degree from this diagram we can come to a decision if the this is the definition of longitudinal wave before uh, making you understand i show you the diagram mm, uh, to make it easier if the wave propagation if the direction of wave propagation of wave propagation is at 0 degree with the direction of of particle vibration then the wave is called longitudinal wave uh, 
Huh. Students, we have already learned two types of uh, um, waves. That is the uh, specific. This is the that is the type of mechanical wave. Uh, one is transverse wave, and another is longitudinal wave. The um, thing we have to focus here. That is here. It is zero degree, and the previous one was at ninety degree. This is the basic difference between longitudinal wave and transverse wave. Now I am telling you about the structure of a wave. We have to draw the figure again. Here, this is amplitude. And this is wavelength. This is called lambda. This is the line of equilibrium. This is the line of equilibrium. And amplitude is the maximum distance. Amplitude is the maximum distance uh, from the equilibrium. Now we can write the definition of amplitude. Amplitude is the maximum distance from the line of equilibrium. And this point I have told you previously and this point this is the crest and we can see here the crest is the highest point of the wave and trough is the lowest point of the wave so amplitude can be this one or this one because crest or trough both of them have the maximum distance from the equilibrium so we can also say amplitude is the distance of crest or trough from the line of equilibrium this is about amplitude of the wave now about wavelength before learning wavelength we have to uh, learn about uh, the term phase what is phase we can say two points are in phase when they have same speed same position and the uh, same direction of their movement if the two points have same position same direction and same direction of movement and same speed then they are called phase so Wavelength is the distance between two points which are in phase. Wavelength. Is the distance. between two points which are in phase 
Wavelength is the distance between two points which are in phase. Here, these two points are in phase because they are in equilibrium. So they have speed, same speed, same. Uh, they have same direction of movement. They have uh, same position. If we think about these two points, this is also wavelength, and this is uh, specified. This is the symbol of this of wavelength is lambda. This is called lambda. Here, it is lambda we can say here these two points they are in phase this is also lambda we have to learn about uh, lambda very clearly because this is a very important uh, topic of physics huh? this is wavelength this is all about wavelength amplitude and phase Now about time period. In physics, we tell this one way. Suppose if we rub everything here, this is one way. One way length is called one way. This is one wave and time period is the here time period is the time which is taken to pass one wave here we can say the definition here in this way time period is the time to pass one wave you can say here one wavelength also somebody tell is one wavelength to one wavelength and frequency I am telling you about frequency here. It is the symbol of time period is T, capital T here. And frequency is the number of waves. passed in one second here the time sorry here one wavelength here one second here time taken to pass one wave time taken to pass one wavelength or one wave here the number of waves in one second if we go to unitary method i am writing the definition of frequency here again Frequency is the number of waves and it is the uh, it is indicated with the symbol of F a small f. Here, uh, with a time period and frequency, they have a relation here. I want to relate um, them here. 
it is one second and it is one wavelength it is one second and it is one wavelength if we go to unitary method then we can say you can write it in a box here in t seconds capital t this is capital t and it is the symbol of time period in capital t the second one wave is passed so in one second one by t waves are passed here in one second the number of waves in one second you can relate it with this one the number of waves in one second is called frequency so 1 by t 1 by t we can tell it frequency so there is an inver inverse relation between frequency and time period huh? hey, 1 by t is equal to frequency this is the unitary method to relate frequency and time period now about another topic that is wave velocity i have not uh, mentioned previously but i want to tell you about something that was velocity we have learned uh, um, previously that velocity is the ratio of displacement and time and the formula of velocity is d by t velocity is equal to d by t if we uh, visualize this wave here this is the wavelength and this wavelength is the distance if we think wavelength is the distance then the time taken for one wavelength is capital T that is time period we have learned just now this is V and we have learned another equation that is 1 by t is equal to f so we can here write in this way 1 by t and then lambda into f at last we have got the formula here that is v is equal to f lambda v is equal to f lambda this is a, a famous formula of physics this is a famous formula of waves you have to learn it then another topic we have learned the topic uh, wave velocity and now we will learn about reflection and refraction here reflection we can learn this with the diagram
this is the diagram of reflection here the incident ray is reflected by this surface and it is bounced off to the same medium so from this diagram we can write the definition here if light ray is bounced to bounced off to the same medium then we say light is reflected so here incident ray is bounced off from this surface uh, suppose this is the surface of a mirror surface of, of, of glass or surface of water this is the so it is the it can be the surface of uh, mirror and this is reflected ray and this ray is bounced off from this surface and it has gone to the same medium and i and r angle i is the incident angle of incidence and angle r is the angle of refraction reflection sorry and this is the law of reflection the angle i is equal to angle r now about refraction this is less dense medium suppose less dense and this is more dense when light travels from less dense medium to more dense medium then it come closer to the normal and when light uh, moves from or travels from uh, less dense medium to more dense medium it goes away from the normal in this way light bends when it goes from one medium to another medium so this bending of light is called refraction this is refraction sorry From this diagram, we can uh, come to this is I, this is R. We can come to a definition that is when light goes from one medium to another medium it bends medium it bends this bending of light is called refraction this bending of light is called refraction called refraction so now we uh, can review the two definition of reflection and refraction reflection is the bouncing of light and refraction is the 
bending of light now about critical angle this is a very important topic of light OF and this is about critical angle Suppose this is dense medium. And this is less dense medium. This is denser medium and this is less dense medium and light goes from this medium to this medium. This is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of refraction. I have told you previously that if light goes from denser medium to less dense medium then the light goes from away from the normal. Here the here R is greater than I. So if we increase the critical angle, if we increase sorry, in, if we increase the angle of incidence here, the angle of refraction will also increase in this way. If we increase this one, it will also increase. And the ray of refraction will reach to the surface first here. Suppose I am giving you a special diagram here. If the for a certain angle of incidence angle for a certain the angle of refraction r is equal to 90 degree for a certain value of incidence angle the r is equal to 90 degree i'm telling you again if we increase the angle of incidence here the angle of refraction will also increase and it will come to the surface fast the angle of refraction will come to the surface fast and here for a certain value of angle of incidence will the angle of refraction will be 90 degree from this the uh, analyze uh, from the analytical explanation of these two diagram we can come to a decision that the critical angle critical angle is the certain value of angle of incidence for which the angle of refraction is 90 degree here we have to follow two conditions condition one that is light must go from D 
denser medium to less dense medium. This is the first condition and second condition is light sorry the angle of incidence must be increased gradually from a minimum value from a minimum So now we have learnt about critical angle. Critical angle is the uh, certain value of the angle of uh, of incidence for which the angle of refraction is 90 degree. Now this is the very interesting uh, term of physics that is total internal reflection. What happened after this? I am going to the diagram again and suppose this is critical angle C. This is critical angle and for this angle here the angle of refraction is 90 degree here. Here this is uh, mm, observable that this is R. This is observable that here the angle the uh, uh, ray of refraction has reached to the surface but for the incident ray you have a space here to increase this angle so if we increase this angle what will happen if we increase the value of i and the angle of incidence is more than critical angle what will happen here if we increase the angle and it is more than suppose it is more than now i is more than critical angle this is critical angle this is suppose this is i i is more than critical angle so the light will not refracted not be refracted anymore and it will be reflected this is r Now it will follow the angle of follow the rule of reflection totally. I have told you previously about the um, angle, angle of reflection but that was not actual reflection that was not full reflection that was partial reflection but here light will not refracted anymore and it will be totally reflected light will be totally reflected and this is called total internal reflection i am writing you uh, writing for you the definition here total internal reflection total I is greater than C. If the 
angle is more than critical angle sorry here angle of refraction angle of incidence is more than critical angle i is greater than c then light is not refracted anymore any then right light is not refracted anymore and it will be totally reflected here and it will be totally reflected and this is called total internal reflection this is called total internal reflection tir total internal reflection this is all about reflection and refraction and critical angle and the extremum uh, um, situation after critical angle is total internal reflection um, now we have learned all about uh, all the basic terms of waves here i am giving you a review here again firstly we have learned transverse wave and longitudinal wave and we have learned the definition secondly we have learned the structure of wave that is uh, wavelength time period and amplitude frequency the wave velocity then we have learned about reflection and refraction and then about critical angle and at last we have lear learned the interesting point of physics that is total internal reflection and we will see a video clip on total internal reflection now this is all about this uh, no more today inshallah we will meet again allah hafiz